Hello friends. Today we're going to learn how to use Excel sheet to work with the simplex table. For this we have taken a very small example with maximization as an objective functions with two variables x1 and x2 and set of three constraints along with the non-negativity conditions. So the first step is to convert this linear programming problem into a standard form. So converting a linear programming problem into step form in the standard form consists of uh, writing the inequalities into equalities. This is done by introducing a slack variable to each of the constraint equations which has less than or equal to sign. Over here, S1, S2, S3 are the slack variables which are introduced in the first, second, and third constant respectively to convert this less than equality into equality sign. All the variables involved in this particular standard form are greater than or equal to zero, which we call it the feasibility condition of the problem. Now the next step is to identify a set of variables from the three constraints whose coefficient matrix gives us an identity matrix so as to start the simplex calculations. The initial simplex table can be started only with a set of variables whose coefficient matrix is an identity matrix. Whose coefficient, uh, set of variables whose coefficient matrix gives us an identity matrix. So over here S1, S2, S3 is giving us an identity coefficient matrix and hence S1, S2, S3 will be the starting basic visual solution. Now, to assure the feasibility conditions of the initial table, the right-hand side values of the constraint equations should all be positive. Now, let's start the table. This is the initial table. This will be the structure of the table, simplex table that we, we are going to use. Cj is the coefficients of the variables in the z equations. Xb column is the column for the current basic feasible solutions. CV is the coefficient of these variables, the basic variables in the Z equations. The values over here will enter from the constraints equations. Now let's do it. The set of basic feasible solutions for the current table is S1, S2, and S3. The coefficients of these variables in the Z equations are 0, 0, and 0. The coefficient of X1 in Z equation is 3 x2 is 9, s1 is 0, s2 is 0, s3 is 0. From the first constraint equations, we have x1 coefficient is 2, x2 coefficient 1, s1 is 1, 0, and 0, and right hand type is 50. From second, 1, 4, 0, 1, 0, and 100. Finally, from the last constraint, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, and 90. Now let's find out the value of ZJ. ZJ value can be obtained as a sum product of the CV column, which will be used for all the ZJs. So we are locking this one, comma, this column. Apply the formula to the remaining shell. You can check the formula over here. It's the product of the CB column and this column. And this formula can be dragged up to this point. This is the value, this is the current value of Z, the objective function. Now the JJ minus CJ, JJ minus CJ. The JJ minus CJ, we call it the optimality conditions of the current table. In the case of maximizations, all the JJ minus CJ should be greater than or equal to zero, only then the optimal, optimal solution is set to achieve. Else, we move to the next table. By allowing any of the non basic variable to enter, uh, to enter the basis, and one of the basic feasible solutions will have to depart. So for this, what we do is we identify that particular non-basic variable which has the most negative JJ minus CJ. In this case, X2 is having the most negative JJ minus CJ and hence X2 will be entering the basis in the next table. So when X2 enter the basis, one of this, one of this current basic feasible solution has to leave the basis. 
this column that I'm coloring over here, we call it the pivot column. Now let's find out the ratio. The ratio between the solution column and the pivot elements, the columns in the, uh, the elements in the pivot column. Now let me take the ratio of 50 divided by the corresponding element one. Apply the formula to the remaining sales. Now, see, one thing has to be taken care of. I mean, the divisions, the, uh, the, the ratio will be taken only for these uh, elements which are strictly positive. If any of the elements are over here are negative or zero, then that for, for, for that particular element, the ratio will not be considered. Now, let's identify the one which has the minimum ratio among these three. So over here, 25 is having the minimum element, uh, min minimum ratio. So this corresponds to S2, and, and hence S2 will be the living variable. And this row is the pivot row. The intersection of this pivot column and pivot row, which is 4 over here, is the pivot element of the current table. So now let's construct a new table. Let's start, the const let's start constructing a new table with the new variables in the basic uh, in, in, in new variable in the basic column. X2 is the new variables. So we start constructing this X2 row first. This is done by dividing these elements of the pivot row by the pivot element. Select the cell and lock it. All the element will be divided by the pivot element. Drag it, apply the formula to the remaining cell. Now, the, uh, the row for the new uh, basic variable has been is now constructed. The coefficient of x2 in the z equation is 9. Z equation is 9. Now, over here, the best other basic variable remains the same S1 and S3 remains the same. So now let's construct the S1 row. S1 row will be constructed like this. Select this cell first, the original element of the original element in S4 in the in the previous table minus this element into the element in the pivot column for this row, which is one, lock the cell. Enter, drag the formula to the other cell, apply the formula to the other cell. Let's do the same for this. Two minus 0 0.25 into the element in the pivot column for this row lock it sorry apply the formula to the remaining element of this row done now let's Check one thing over here. These are the current basic feasible solutions. The coefficient of S1 is 0. The coefficient of S2 also is 0. See, I mean, S1, X2, and S3 are the current basic feasible solutions. The column corresponding to S1, X2, and S3 will give us an identity matrix. Now let's find out the value of Zj for the different variables that we have. This will be some product between this column, which I'm going to lock it, comma, and this column, right? So apply the formula to the remaining cell, and uh, JJ minus CJ will be JJ minus CJ. Apply the cell. Apply the formula to the remaining uh, remaining columns. See, this is the current value of the objective functions because of this basic feasible solutions, because of this basic feasible solution and this basic variables. It was zero before, now it's improved to 225. It's increased to 225. 
So at, at, at so, so I mean, uh, one thing that we should uh, remember is when you move from one table to another table, the value of Z should be always on the increase if it is maximization, or it should be on the decline if it is minimization. Now let's check the optimality conditions. This is the optimality conditions. Since you, you still have a negative value over here, the current basic feasible solution is still yet to be optimum. So what we do is we make this x1 enter the basis. Now this is the current pivot column. To find out the pivot row, we find out a ratio between the solution column and the pivot column. Apply the formula to the remaining rows. So the minimum ratio is occurring corresponding to S3 and hence X3 will be, will be the living variable. Right, will be the living variable and now let's construct, let's move to the next table. This is the new table. In the new table, the basic variables are S1 remains the same, X2 also remains the same, X3 is now changed into X1. And the coefficients of these variables in the objective equations are 0, x2 is 9, x3 is 3, x1 is 3. You always start constructing the rows of this table from the new variable. So this is done by dividing the original elements of the previous table of this particular row by the pivot element. This is the element. So I'm locking this element so that this element is used to divide the remaining elements of the row. And this row will be constructed by using this number, this minus this into element in the pivot column for this row, the same element then, lock the cell, apply the formula to the remaining elements of the same row, do the same for this, this minus this uh, into into this number, but you'll have to lock this one so that this number is used to all the remaining cell of the row. Done. Now let's find out the value of JJ. This column, which will be lock, comma, and this column, right? Apply this formula to the remaining cells of the table. Then JJ minus CJ. Now see, all the values of JJ minus CJ, all the values of JJ minus CJ are now greater than or equal to zero and hence the current basic feasible solutions is the optimal basic feasible solutions and the maximum value of z the maximum profit is two three four which is better than two two five right now one thing that we need to observe in each of the table is the set of basic feasible solutions will give us an identity matrix from the table in the, the column corresponding, the column corresponding to the set of basic feasible solutions in the table will always provide us an identity matrix at any stage of the calculations. And the column over here will never be negative. And the JJ minus CJ for the basic variable at any table will always be zero. Now, now let's write down the solutions. The optimum solutions to our problem is x1 equals to 12, x2 equals to 22, and the corresponding maximum value of z is 
two, three, four. All right. 